Tell us why you're running, what you're going to do for San Francisco, and why you ought to be someone the Guardian endorses. Great. And I don't know. I think that's really your decision. I, I'm, I'm really here because I enjoy the Guardian, and I enjoy the relationship, and I enjoy what you champion. I'm not sure that I'm the right fit for you. Maybe, I just, I, I don't really think it. I think that there are things that you are passionate about that would make it difficult because you probably view me through a lens that, that wouldn't qualify me. But that's not the reason I'm here. I'm here because you're important. You're a very important political force in the city. A lot of people look to you. And even if you can acknowledge the things that we agree on, I think that's the foundation of a relationship. And so I really take off the table, I'm your guy, and more put on the table, can we look on where we are together and think less about where we're apart and focus on some good and then some challenging each other. So I ran the city's complaint department for five and a half years under Mayor Willie Brown, and it was an amazing experience for me because I had worked in Washington, I've worked for some great members of Congress like Shirley Chisholm, and I've had a lot of uh, you know, fun experiences at that level. And I came down the political food chain and I didn't know Willie Brown. I'd only been working at City Hall for a couple of years and I started running the city's complaint department. And it was revelatory for me to get up every day and try and make the city work for people. And I think that that's the foundation upon which I built in being a supervisor, is just looking at what is the city trying to do and how can we be more effective in doing it. And so I want to talk about a couple of things that are crazy for a candidate to talk about, which is, What's a mayor do? A mayor leads city government. And so, so many of us as politicians are coming to you to saying, I'm great. The positions I take are great. I'm an amazing leader. I am going to articulate a green agenda or a clean power agenda or whatever, a bicycle agenda. And I'm important as a politician in doing that. And I want to tell you something. What have I learned in my 18 years working for the city? There are 27,000 people that work for the city and county of San Francisco. And you know what? They're the main event in this city. They're the people that deliver the services on a daily basis. They're the people who become corroded with the hypocrisy of city government where the leaders don't focus on elevating the people that work for the city, neither giving them the tools nor the inspiration nor the support to be successful in what they do. Because ultimately, what I tell you about how great I am matters a lot more than how I resonate with the people that work for the city. So let's just talk about some services. I could come in and tell you, I've got the Muni plan. I'm going to tax downtown. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Guess what it comes down to? The Karen Carpenter song, Rainy Days and Mondays. What's it about? Does the operator show up? Last year, 14% of the time, the operators didn't show up. And I'm not picking on the operators, okay? I'm just being real. This year, 12.5%. Tremendous success, right? One out of every eight days, somebody's not showing up for a shift. I don't care how much you invest in the grievance process. I don't care how much you value who, what Prop G does to negotiate. Ultimately, a driver is making a decision on that Monday, on that rainy day, are they coming to work? And I want to have a covenant with the people that work with the city. I want to have a relationship. I stood out at West Portal yesterday and I looked at all the, the train operators. There are all these lines coming through West Portal. So I saw operator after operator, enormously people of color, but not just African American, Asian women. Latino, African American, and younger. A lot of people have come to work for the city. So what do I want to do? I want to bring an element of life coaching and engaging people and saying, guess what, Tim, as a 25-year-old new bus driver, where do you want to be in five years? Okay. That haircut is really, it's definitely an expression you made. I'll tell you that much. But you start with somebody who's a 25-year-old bus operator and you say, where do you want to be in five years and 10 years? I want to be a mayor that says to you, you can be the general manager. I am not looking to hire people from outside of San Francisco. You've heard me consistently talk about that. But what can we do with you? Can we talk to you about first-time home buyer? Can we talk to you about applying for a below-market unit in some of the developments that are going to come with Trans Bay and other places? Can we talk about the classes you might take at City College that will advance you as a transit professional through the ranks? Maybe you've got a girlfriend with a baby, but you haven't gotten married because your finances aren't together. Financial counseling and coaching through that. Maybe it's anger management. There's just a panoply of things that we can be doing that relate us to the people providing the services and create a covenant. So if you're out pushing a broom for 40 hours, you're not pushing a broom. You're building for the success of your family. Wise Camp made there a secret. 
Why can't people that are child welfare workers know that they could bring their family and not have to chase after their kids because they're safe in a neighborhood and they get to have dinner cooked for them for a week? Why is it only certain people know about these things? And what does that do to that rainy day on Monday? Maybe that operator who's met me at the bus yard, maybe that operator who knows me by name and I know them by name, says, oh shit, it's raining, but you know what? Bevan cares about me and it matters that I show up so somebody's waiting 20 minutes for the 37 Corbett and not 40 minutes. And it sounds crazy, but that's what I intend to do. That's exactly the type of mayor I'm going to be. And I know you know me to be that person. How did I get endorsed by SEIU 10 to 1 as their third choice from a union that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to defeat me in 2002? Because those people came to know me and know that I don't believe in contracting out that I believe in the dignity of people at work for this city. I believe that to my core. As much as you may not agree with me on landlord-tenant issues, as much as you might wish that I fought PG&E even harder, as much as you might be frustrated that I'm not throwing a brick at Lennar and trying to figure out how to build in this complicated environment and admitting that maybe Lennar wasn't the best choice, but certainly I had nothing to do with the lobbying that got them to be that choice. But the bottom line is, I think you should challenge the people that walk in here. They can promise you all they want. They can tell you how fabulous they are, but ultimately, it's the people pushing the brooms, the people chasing the stray dogs, the people riding the parking tickets, the people in the police cars, and the people that are operating the 37 Corbett, the K, the J, and all these lines that matter. And I, in 18 years, have not seen a mayor take that approach to things. My consultant thinks I'm out of my mind, but that's exactly not what people want to hear about. They want you to, city employees, they get too much money. I don't think everybody that lives in the city knows people that work for the city. It's ridiculous. That's, that's not how to lead. That's just not how to lead this city. So the one other thing I'll say, and then I'll shut up and I'll, I'll parry back and forth, is I've stood up in every forum, every location, in the whitest rooms in San Francisco, and said, you know what? The next mayor better have a black agenda. God bless, the Bay Guardian does have a black agenda. And I think that we agree about much of it. It is outrageous that we are a city that can be a thought leader around marriage equality, healthy San Francisco, nutritional quality to happy meals. All these are things that I supported. Sanctuary city, the things that we have championed. Why is it that we accept that our political leaders can't make us the city that America looks to in creating a healthy and vibrant black community. That's what America should be looking to us to do. Lord knows, the bar is set pretty low, right? 6% right now. Look at these young men, young men who are black and brown, what they live in in this city. You know I've, I've challenged this stuff. I created a program at Mission High School to send kids to four-year colleges for summer experiences. It's tripled the number of kids going to four-year colleges over five years, tripled the number of student athletes at Mission. And guess what? Mission went up 70 points last year. And I'm on the board of this organization. I've raised money, I've pushed, I've fought, I've done some things there. 